and we're live! Welcome, it's episode 3 of series 2 of Equinance Live and what an amazing night we've got for you this evening. Welcome to everyone. I have no idea how many of you have joined us because I've decided to turn the ticker off at the top of my screen because the more people that watch, the more it makes me nervous. So that's not a good thing, is it, right? We don't want to be nervous. We want to be having some fun in this lockdown times. Well, listen, thank you to everyone who comes and joins us every week. This has become really popular. It's always free. So firstly, don't ever click one of those links that scams you into giving your credit card details. They're not going to happen. We are not doing this for money, and nor are any of our guests, because that was a question that was asked to me this week. How much are you paying the guests to be on? Ah, uh, we're not. No money is changing hands in any of this whatsoever. All of our guests are doing it because they really want to be involved. We're doing it just because we want to be involved. The adverts you see at the beginning, they're not paying. They're just really good friends of ours, and I made the adverts. So it's something really cool and interesting to pay at the beginning. There is nothing sinister or mercenary going on. This is a show to keep the dressage community in the UK and actually, frankly, around the world by watching the viewing figures from last week, connected, enthused and inspired in this really strange lockdown period we find ourselves in, especially when we can't maybe ride our horses or hire arenas or have lessons and especially no competitions. No competitions. So anyway, there we go. I was reading the BD magazine then to feel a, a little bit of inspiration, but not all the competitions were covered there either. But, however, uh, what you need to do tonight is, because we don't pay to do anything for this and no one pays us, the best way to make sure people see this and don't get excluded is by sharing. So if you could all just share this feed you can share it as a watch party, you can share it in a group, you can share it on your timeline, but share it to anywhere relevant because actually we believe people could hopefully get quite a bit out of what we do here with our wonderful guests. It's not about us, it's about our guests and they can give you an awful lot to think about and an awful lot to feel good about. So share, share and share away. We don't, we're not going to spend any money on doing that useless Facebook marketing thing whatever it is anyway what else we're going to talk about here right uh so let's look at what we've got coming up with equidance live because every week things change and every week they get even better this is the menu now let me talk you through it so of course we had anna ross and beth bainridge on the first week two weeks ago it went beautifully bobby and paul Haler last week Huge response to that. This week, of course, we've got the legendary Steph Croxford coming up in a short while. Next week, <laughs> Jenny Lawson Clark, can't believe it, had to actually go there just to film the intro, socially distanced, of course. What an absolute inspiration. That's going to be a popular one too. The week after, we were going to have Wayne Garrick. Uh, actually, I think I've just opened up the wrong menu here. Now, I'm going to take this one off because it's in the right menu. Have a look on our on our Equidance Facebook page, but Wayne Garrick and I have decided, because we're going to go full tilt, it's not a family-friendly show. <laughs> it's going to be a, a post-watershed thing. So watch this space. Wayne and I have got something cooking for that one. Justin Tucker's going to come on a little bit later because he's expecting a baby. Well, not him, but they're expecting a baby, which is wonderful news too. So hopefully we can talk about that. And also we've got Gillian from Horses Inside and Out coming and joining us. But please have a look on the Facebook page because I loaded the wrong menu to play live. Typical, isn't it, really? But hey-ho, there's lots going on. Uh, also, Mrs Equidance has contacted a few technical people within the equestrian industry and she's going to be running a special called Geek Peaks. Equidance Geek Peaks where she's going to be talking to people about all sorts of more nitty gritty scientific stuff because of course Mrs Equidance is a proper scientist studying her PhD at the moment if no one knew. So yes we are running the company, We are. she's studying her PhD, we have the children at home it's mental, but I'm sure loads of you know about what I'm talking about. I know Steph Croxford does. Um, okay, YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel has now archived all of the shows, so from Series 1 and from Series 2. And one of the most popular things we get asked is, where can we watch the reruns of the shows? Well, if you just go to the YouTube Equidance channel, hit the playlists, you'll see Series 1 and Series 2. Even this episode will be up there either later tonight or if I'm too knackered tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so give it a subscribe and a like. Uh, one more thing before we move forward. I've got to talk about something else. Right, in the news this week, uh, you saw on ITV with Pammy Hutton from Talent, 
people are talking about uh, welfare issues with horses at the moment because of the COVID situation. This is a really serious thing uh, because there are companies out there who've slipped through the net with being able to get money uh, to help themselves uh, help feed and bedding and everything, you know, and the farriers and everything, you know, the costs that uh, are all included with owning and keeping horses. So the charity that we supported all the way through the last series, we are now decided to continue to support all the way through this series, and they're called Horse World. The CEO of Horse World used to be the CEO of Brooke, so it's in really good hands. They're not too far away from us, and we featured an Equidance Live series there at the end of the summer. If you want to go back to YouTube and have a look, it was an absolutely wonderful time. We love them, we love what they do. Not only do they rescue horses, they rehome horses, and they also work with uh, children uh, who need the help uh, to help them ride and things. It's absolutely fabulous to have a look. Um, so what we're gonna say is, because we're doing this for note, <laughs> and because all our guests come on and do this for now, there's there's no money changing hand. This is not a mercenary experience. This is a very uh, charitable thing to do. We want to support a charity. So if any of you, please, can, uh, if you love what we do here and you're really enjoying the series, if you can help out and just go to either text, you can text Horse World to 70085 to donate three pounds. That's horse world to 70085 to donate three pounds. And you can do that more than once if you want. <laughs> but um, that every three pounds will be a massive difference to the horses they're looking after. Um, or also, if you look at our Facebook page from earlier, uh, I put on a link to their donate page if you want to donate a little more. So if you think if you think our shows are worth a little more than three pounds to watch, you can go and donate a little more. Just look at the Equidance page later on. We'd really appreciate it because we really love what they do and we, we work in close partnership with them. So text HORSEWORLD to 70085 to donate three pounds. And that is the only money that will change hands with anything to do with Equidance Live, I promise you. Uh, there's no commerciality to this. So if you've got a company and you contacted us and say, uh, would you take some money to put an advert on at the beginning? No, nope, it's not what we're about. Uh, if you're a small company and you're struggling to get business right now and you want to put an advert up, send us your advert and we'll put it in the holding screen at the beginning because we'd like to help you out. There we go. So we're going to move on now. Uh, just play you a little horse world thing just so you know about what they do. A little short video and then we'll move on to Steph Croxford. Just enjoy this a minute. Hi there, my name's Meg. I'm the PR and comms officer here at Horseworld. Uh, this is my friend Athena um, and I just wanted to send you guys a quick video to say thank you so much for all the amazing donations that have come in. Thank you to our friends at Equidance. Thank you to you guys who have donated. Your donations mean so much to us. Um, they mean so much to us at all times. Uh, I just realised my hat's at a very jaunty angle. Um, they mean so much to us at all times, but particularly at the moment when we are living in these crazy times. Your ongoing support, hi Grace, uh, is going to help us help more horses like Grace and Athena here. Athena we rescued in uh, July 2019. She was rescued after being found uh, grazing illegally, or being grazed illegally, on some council land. She had her foal with her, um, and she was very poorly. She was very thin, she had liver damage, she had ulcers in her eye. Um, it took a long time, sorry, am I boring you? It took a long time for the team here at Horse World to get her back to anywhere near where we'd like her to be for healthiness. I know, Grace, it's not all about you. What Grace wants to say hello as well. Um, so it's thanks to you guys that we've not only now able to help Athena get healthy, but we're also able to help her foal get healthy too. He's also living here. He's part of the younger herd. Uh, he's learning how to be a strapping young man. 
Uh, but thanks to you guys, thanks to your support, we can help more horses uh, like Athena here, like her friends. So thank you again to everyone who has donated. It really does mean so much to all of us. Uh, and yeah, we, we really can't say thank you enough. Thanks a lot. Bye. So there you go. It's really important. That's our chosen charity. That's Horse World. They do amazing things. And we all love horses, right? Uh, so not only do they help horses in peril at the best of times, they're also helping them at the worst of times. So if you can dig deep, that would be great. If you haven't got much to give, but you want to give something, you can text Horse World to 70085. That's Horse World to 70085 to donate £3. Thanks, folks. It means a lot if you can support us with that. Right, moving on. A little bit of fun before we introduce Steph Croxford and her family, actually, because it is a family affair, like it is with Equidance. But a little bit of fun. Um, who's been sorting their taxes out recently? If you've been sorting your tax out and you're self-employed like we are, uh, and you've had a query from HMRC, you've had to phone HMRC, and I bet you've been on hold for a flippin' age. So everyone's going to know this piece of music. So Kelly, Mrs Equidance, thought she put a bit of Anna Ross's dressage to it. How long have you been sat on the phone to that hold music? <laughs> anyway, a little bit of fun there. We're going to introduce you to Steph Croxford with a little video that we put together from a whole load of videos she sent us. I mean, I said to Steph, can you do a bit of filming back at the yard, just with your family and stuff, a day in the life of kind of thing. I had so much, it took me a day to edit it. So here you go. Welcome to uh, Steph, and we'll introduce her onto the screen after this video. Good morning, my name is Steph Croxford. I am allegedly an International Grand Prix dressage rider. It is, um, I got up about half six this morning, um, um, and Tony from Equidance has asked you, uh, me to give you an insight into a very exciting day um, in the life of me um, and uh, my family. Um, anyway, so here it is. Um, I'll just have a cup of tea. Please note hat number one, because I'm still sporting the um, lockdown number three haircut that my husband gave me with the dog lippers. Here is number one groom feeding. Oh, this is Shirley Wells. He's going to be ridden with Annabelle in a bit, aren't you, Shirley? Here we go, that's Watson. You can't have Sherlock without Watson. He's our lovely two, two year old now, Watson. Did you hear that from Gamblethorpe? Here we go. Poons, here we go, Thug and Rooney. Say morning, Thug. Now we need tea or, oh well, he's breakfast already. Obviously, the dogs are clearing up if they can. And then we go over to the tank, Jurist. Here he is, morning, Jurist. Hey, when your breakfast this morning? Morning, how you doing? Good breakfast? That's good. And while we're in here, I seem to have lost number one. Uh... Oh, there we go. Say morning, Si. Morning. morning. Oh, I'll introduce you while we're up here. This is Rusty. Rusty the Rust Bucket. Simon's number one love in his life. So, yeah, so this is where it all starts at uh, 6, 6.30 in the morning. And... Um, now my job is to go and get Annabelle out of bed, uh, get her fed and motivated in the rain to go and ride her pony before she starts homeschooling at quarter to nine this morning. Morning Annabelle. That's his child number one. Well, not number one child, but the number first of two. Child. Number one child. Sometimes she thinks she's number one, but maybe not all the time. Okay. Morning.
morning child number two, not the number second child, but second as in succession, if you know what I mean. You're just as important as number one child who's still eating. So this is Sherlock. Sherlock is out of the same set of mares that Thug has come from. And he was supposed to have ended up um, about 16 one and was going to be my next International Grand Prix horse, but clearly he didn't get the memo, did he, Annabelle? Non-horsey son is using his available time that he's got on the computer to play. Is it Minecraft today? Minecraft, okay. Is George playing with you? Mm -hmm. Alright, is George still in bed? Is he, have you not spam called him yet? Mm -hmm. No, right. And, and Thunder has the right idea. Let's just look out at the bad weather. That's it. We don't do rain, do we, Thunder? Hey? Just in the process now, I've done all me mucking out. Just in the process of doing my um, uh, my feeds, as you can see. Here we go, yeah, still doing these. Well, Annabelle and Simon are getting very soggy out on the Derbyshire hills. Um, and uh, it's really, you know, it's just this bit, of the, it's a video to say that I don't, I don't feed anything fancy to my horses. I just use the local, um, feed merchant cool cubes and um, cool mix and then if I think they need it they might have some um, conditioning cubes in the winter if I feel they need it but um, and Denji and just some Denji Hi-Fi original and here's my mix of my sugar bee and my alfalfa pellets Soggy schooling session in the beautiful Derbyshire hills. I'm not sure if said come and live in Derbyshire, it's a beautiful part of the world. It's Derbyshire countryside. Anyway, I think I'm always wet to be knickers, but just think of yeah, sausages. <laughs> That's what he thinks of it as well. Anyway, oh yes. Anyway, Derbyshire magazine clearly wouldn't come out in the daylight today, would they? They obviously don't see it in the delights of the poor in rain and sleep. Anyway, let's see if I can hoik myself off. <laughs> Too old. Oh, did I miss the puddle? Yes, that's always a bonus. Right, I've got my eye on. Annabelle, can you come and put your false teeth away, please, before the cat knocks them under the fridge again? Okay, well, can you do it, please? Another part of our exciting day is scanning in my some of my floor plans that we've done. We only have a very short window in which to get them done and sent to various people. So my number one PA here, woohoo, Mr. Croxford himself, is scanning them all in. And then we have to then send them off to various people um, and hope they like them. running with the dogs I am on the Derbyshire hills in the snow and the wind 
And I think I've um, got quite a good pace going uphill. And then, and then look at my child. Right about what are we having for supper tonight? Not garlic bread, garlic naans. <laughs> Nearly. And tikka masala. Mm -hmm. And are you going to make the chicken tikka masala? Are you? For your Duke of Edinburgh? Yeah, I am. Annabelle's going to cook. So we're going to just see if this actually happens tonight, whether we actually see Annabelle in the kitchen for any longer than two minutes. All right, Ben. Pride and joy, my dear. No, you're yes. quite pride and joy. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. God. <laughs> Done as good, he has. Started the day shoveling poo on the muck keep and finishing the day shoveling poo on the muck keep. But at least I can actually see when it blows into my face this time, which is always a bonus. Looks edible. Mm -hmm. Do we think it looks edible? No. Oi! <laughs> what? I'll take that from no, you. No, Thank no, you very no. much. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That hungry. Do you think it looks edible, Dad? I think it looks amazing. Oh, well done. TVG, Ben, loving your hairstyle. Has dad, Daddy been at your hair? Yeah. Well, we've just done our 10 o'clocks and I thought that we should be together to prove that we are married and we are together, putting up with each other. Um, notice I've got the, the, comb the, over. the comb over side of my hair. You can't see the ball pack. No, 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 ball pack. So when you see me in my interview on uh, Friday, I'm going to have it. So I haven't got my double chin. I'm going to make sure that the light <laughs> is that right. Go? Where's that going to go? Just, it's going to go down to my like bra. Got this. Got this. What's that? No, well, I'll put, push it back. Maybe I'll have some tape. I'll, tape I'll get the that. kids we'll do that. at the back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. I'll hold your neck. Like what that? about my bags? Should we do that? As well? Anyway, okay. hope you've enjoyed. Um, spending a day with us. Uh, we are a bit of a mad family and um, we look forward to seeing you at some point in the future. If you ever see us at any shows or anything, stop watching the cricket, Simon. I can see you watching it. Um, you did really well today. I, I know. Anyway, um, please come over and say hi um, and, um, and we look forward to seeing you. Take care. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. What a beautiful insight into the day in the life of Steph Croxton and her family. And actually, uh, you know, the, uh, the the kind of, everyone seems to dress up for our shows. Well, Steph, hello, is wearing a wig. Hello. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Miss Steph Croxford. How are you doing? Hi, Kat. Oh, we're all right. Do you like my attire? This is my, obviously, I don't know if people have been following my lockdown number three was a bit of a dis uh, haircut, was a bit of a disaster. Alan, my husband, and the dog clippers. So this is the first thing I could find that the kids had out of their dressing up drawer because Ben was dressed up as Gangster Granny for the book World Book Day last year. So I think, do you think it's fetching? Do you think I should go for it? No, I'd rather see your dog clippers. Oh, God, right, there we go. Now that's the stuff Docs of we know, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. <laughs> but hey, God, look, it's terrible. Look, bold, bold. It's it's not so bad, really, is it? We got actually we're, we're kind of we, we're sporting a similar style here, Steph. Yeah, but we? York wasn't done with dog clippers. No, but it's been threatened to be. Actually, horse clippers, <laughs> like massive ones that could take my ear off. <laughs> and what's this? What's this bling behind you? I'm looking at. This is Mr. P's. Oh. Uh, I know, and he's 
you know, his legacy that he's left behind. Um, it stretches all across Europe from um, that one was the first one he got, which was uh, the Sunshine Tour uh, and that he did in Spain. Anna will remember that with Liebling, Anna Ross. Because uh, Richard, I was pregnant at the time, and Richard had to uh, had to ride Mr. P, and he was not having this. He's very tricky to ride. Well, well he had to learn to sit his extended trot, and that was interesting. <laughs> uh, that one is um, that was in Italy. That was uh, when we went to Lamandria. We took both children two days across Europe. Yeah. And we heard in the Grand Prix special. Um, that one was um, uh, Mechelen, which was a World Cup, which is great over Christmas. We took Annabelle, we didn't have Ben. Uh, that one, huge one there, is Samur. I can't remember what we won in Samur, but we won something that was big. Um, Sheetgate, bless Sheetgate. When they did rugs and they did their little trophies. Um, and that one was very rare. Charlotte didn't win this one. This was a British dressage, British dressage horse of the year back in the day. So nobody can take that away from Mr. P and I. We got presented it at Olympia. Right, no, no, no. Re, re, rewind, okay? Re, rewind. So, Mr. P, Mr. President. Now, yes. this is a horse that you took from a very ordinary background. You paid two and a half grand for him. Is that right? Yes, he that's was, right. He was born in 1994, and then you took him on as a working mum. I didn't have the children then. Ah, okay. But you were still working? Yes. And you took this... Uh, now, what breed is he, Steph? Just, just correct me on he, this. Uh, he, was, he was bred for... He was father was a Gelderlander, and his mother was a Hackney Cross Dutch Warmblood. The cart horse. Yeah. <laughs> so he's a big yeah. cart horse and you took this beautiful cart horse with a massive heart and a very kind brain uh, and mm. you took him all the way to International Grand Prix. In fact, go on. So I say, yeah, but I was going to say, actually, I, when I got him, the reason I ended up with him was because I, I, re I did have an ex steeplechaser um, and he had to be retired. And um, we basically gave him to a, a hacking home. And I was so upset on the day that Waverly, the horse, had to go to his new hacking home that I looked in the back of the Yorkshire Post, as you do, and all it said was um, four-year-old um, a chestnut gelding for sale, two and a half grand. So I went off with a friend, um, Hayley, and we disappeared off to North Yorkshire and he showed me, first off he showed me what was Mr. P and I went, hmm, have you got anything else? <laughs> and, then he kind of went, <laughs> and then he went along and showed me in the old fashioned, he had old Victorian stalls, you know, these beautiful Victorian stalls and they were all tied up like driving horses. And he, and he showed me about another 10 and in the end he came back to this and said, no, but this is the one you want. I went, well, I suppose I better see it out and move. So he, he got him out, and um, and the reason I bought him, I thought he moved funny. I did know that was dressed hard at the time. Um, but the reason I got him was because he could basically jump a five-bar gate from a standstill. And he did virtually right to the end of his life. But... Yeah, we did that and I bought him. And the reason I ended up in, in dressage was I wanted to do one day eventing and hunt him and everything. And I went to a local cross country clinic here and a lady called, I think Sonia Berry at the time, who was running in the cross country. She went, I don't know what it's doing jumping these, uh, these fences in this field. So she'll be in a dressage arena. I said, do you what? She said, dressage. I said, what do I do? And so she then said, Right, you go to dress up to me. So I went, oh, don't try. I was dressed up. So I went and did a couple of um, unaffiliated <laughs> on one. Um, and I went, oh, this is easy. <laughs> very, very, very easy. Then I went in and did some British dressage and realised that actually maybe it wasn't quite so easy. And um, and then the story really took off from there. He was all right at jumping, but three foot three was about his level. Right. Um, and then it... The rest is history. 
Well, the rest is history. So just pray see it down for me and for us. Because um, for those who don't know, of course, Mr. President is a legend. Now, when I was introduced to dressage by my wife, the wonderful Mrs. Equidance, do you know who the first person she showed me was? No. Yes, it was Cop you. It was. It, it was Steph Croxford. And she said, look, if you want to know about dressage, watch this amazing lady. She's got this basically a cart horse and she's doing the highest level of competition. And now, so this is why tonight is so special for me. Because oh, that, thank you. that's our kind of Robin Hood story. We love that. It's like oh. the everyday person getting into it and doing it with something that's, un, you know, unassuming, underprivileged, just boom, in you went. Yeah. And I watched, yeah. so I watched a lot of you with Mr. Yeah. P. And of course there are other horses too, but just pracy yeah. down what you did, apart from the, the bling behind you with Mr. P. What did he mean to you, Steph? Oh, he. I always used to say he was my other husband. It was... He was like, uh, it was like we knew each other. If ever I had to ride, and hopefully I never will, if I had to ride a horse into battle, I would ride, I would choose that horse every time. He would have died for me. And there's so many times through Olympia and all the you know, World Cup shows and things where he went in and I knew he was scared. But he went, he went, I can do this, mum, we can do this together. And I never, all the time I was pregnant with the children, I rode him, I trusted him with my life. And I, I would, and I say, I would have, I would have, he would have died for me. And I can't, you know, Mr. Hyde, he was fantastic. Would he have gone through fire for me? No. He would have closed his eyes and run round it very quickly. But he'd never <laughs> fire. But Mr. P, he would have, he would have, he died for me. And I still remember that, that final centre line at Olympia. We only got in because other people had dropped out. And it was a mad scramble to think, oh my God, oh my God, we can, we can get there, we can do this. And it all started right back from, I bet you don't remember the old days, Fry's used to run a CDI two-star. No, I, I wouldn't know anything about that stuff, so tell me about that. Oh, right, they used to run a CDI two-star, and they used to get huge amount of people that would come for their gala evening, because, you know, it's very popular, we don't have much up north, you see. And um, they, um, they, they... They had, it was a bit like, it's, it, uh, um, I wouldn't say, it's a Yorkshire version at a Bowlsworth where it goes down into the bowl. Right. Uh, and I remember them all, uh, the, the, um, Simon Fry saying, look, you know, it's the gala evening. We've got over a thousand people here. Um, is there any of the Grand Prix riders that would allow the audience to participate and clap? And everybody was like, oh, I said, well, <laughs> if you see that I've got my changes, and if you see that I look like I'm about to turn down my centre line, then yes, I'm nearly finished and I'm not going to die. The audience can clap. So as I did that, that's when the audience would start their clapping in my final centre line. What was the so, from Passage? That was for my Passage at home. Yeah. So fast forward on to Olympia and I remember doing, doing all my tests at the end, my music, doing my PF, rotating round, and then I suddenly heard the clapping on the, I still remember it now, the right-hand side, and it was people that obviously had been to Yorkshire started clapping. Then it started the other side, and then by the time I'd started my passage sequence, it was rippling around 10,000 people, stamping and clapping in time to the Blues Brothers. And I'm thinking, I don't think I'm going to be able to stop here. I can't possibly halt. I'm going to die. So anyway, so I, fin and I finished my halt. Halt, salute, nice cheer, standing ovation. Never had it again. You know, it was, you know, I didn't realise what was happening at the time. Yeah. Came, uh, yeah, came back out. Richard standing at the, uh, at the uh, opening of the gates of Olympia. What happened there? I said, what do you mean <laughs> He says, well, why did all the audience start clapping? He says, that's uh, Claster's um, uh, audience participation. I said, well, that was nothing to do with me. He, <laughs> said, he says, how did everybody start knowing to clap when you rotated? I went, oh, I don't know. I was just trying to hold on to his back teeth. 
<laughs> so that was it. I mean, we've seen some amazing videos. Obviously, Olympia, wow, what a thing. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, very sadly, you lost him two years ago. Yeah, well, last last uh, November, so about, what, 14 months ago? Yeah, and I know that's really sad for you. Can you let our viewers know the story behind that? Well, he, you know, he, he, he unfortunately always thought he was the soundest Grand Prix horse you're ever going to see in the field. And um, I remember he was, I was preparing to get all ready to go to uh, Myers Coast. I thought, oh, I dig out his music again. I'm a bit of a blur. He looked amazing. Got like, his routine vaccination. They checked his heart. And we live not too far away from a quarry. And um, the vet said, I'm really sorry, but I tell you that he's got a grade five heart murmur. And I was like, well, he wasn't there six months ago. And um, <coughs> excuse me. And then um, she said, it is so loud, I can hear it over the blasting of the quarry. So uh, that day he had his shoes off, he retired. And I was thinking, we're gonna find him dead in the field one day. You know, seven years on the old coot, he was still going. 25, wasn't he? 25. 25. And then eventually it got to that point. I always, I saw for, I kept saying, I want to keep him going. You know, I want him to have the last summer like you do. And then Simon kept saying, look, are you keeping him alive for you, not for him? Um, and we've been very fortunate in our lives with the horses. It's the first time you've ever had to make that awful decision. And I really take my heart off to anybody who has to make that decision because it's awful and um we had it he came up and he had well i let him eat off the lawn simon was annoyed because he's making divots on the grass um so he came up for his last morning and the vet arnie agnew who had um been with him throughout all his life his competitive life arnie came out specially he did it simon and i were with him and I now have a set of um, crocus bulbs in the shape of an R where he he's, took his last breath. And um, so they come up every spring. And um, I was with him and I, I could, until Arnie told me that his heart had stopped. And then I, I couldn't see him be witched away. So I had to go out. And um, Simon was brilliant as always my rock. Simon stayed made sure he went off properly um and um and then rang me and said it, it's done Steph, um, but the hardest thing before you go and find yourself some kleenex and i might need to find myself some too <laughs> so we now i had a dilemma tonight folks i when we were editing the the bits together for the show um steph had got back to me and said can you edit the outtakes from the from the um, from the footage I've told, so, and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, Steph, I just don't have the time, because literally I didn't. But the actual reason was is because I had to edit together a little, um, a little tribute for Mr. P. So we're going to play that now.
I know that's quite emotional for quite a few of you, and uh, what a wonderful story of a wonderful horse. But yeah, I'm sorry, Steph. <laughs> I did back to you again. <laughs> So it's it, it, he he he's a legacy and it's a part of my life. I wouldn't be where I am now doing what I do had I'd be still in an office um, doing my geochem. I still do a bit of geochemistry, but I'd be in an office doing my geochemistry or not in an office. I'd be at home yeah. at the moment with COVID. But I am what he made me, and I owe him everything, and he owed me nothing. I love that. True. So let's talk about how did this happen? I mean, obviously you found the right horse, but everyone wants to know really. In fact, should we, should we go straight to questions? Because I've got some lovely questions for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think all of them, all of them demand a certain amount of time for the answer. I just want to flick through them. Um, I need to explain to you guys as well, of course, Steph is really popular for writing floor plans for freestyle music which is particularly close to our heart, of course, because we work with freestyle music. Um, so if you ever see an advert uh, shared on our channel, um, that's because w we love Steph and, and she's more than happy to design our floor plans. So uh, let's look at your life. I've got some questions here. Could you turn your volume down a little bit, Steph, because I'm getting some feedback. Oh, from. God, I might have to ask a child to do that. Um... <laughs> Is that, just, is that, hold on. It's all right. We'll do that while I find oh. the first question. Uh, I just need to have a look at the first question. Oh. Um, Hang on a minute, Steph. I've got to find the questions first because I'm terrible at this. Oh, you're I'm, being better than me. No, I'm, I'm trying to direct and produce and do everything because Kelly's not here yet. Okay, so question one is from Maria Beavis. See if you can hear Hi. this. Hi, Steph. So my question to you would be, what do you look for in a youngster specifically so is it height build movement what is your crucial thing so steph what do you look for in a youngster height build what what particular thing i mean you were talking about how you found mr p but what do you look for if you were to look for a new horse now what's your, what's your thing i i i'm gonna say that i don't necessarily think i'm the best person to ask <laughs> the reason i say that is because you know sherlock yeah and to have from the video i bought him out of a seven acre field and i didn't have any scale when I bought him. So I looked at how he moved and went, oh, he's really nice. Then he came off the back of the wagon for me and sis. And instead of something that I thought was going to be about 15 hands, he was about 13 one. And <laughs> he was supposed to be my next international Grand Prix horse. Um, and, um, and he obviously didn't get the memo because he stopped at 14 one and a bit. So Annabelle has done very well out of this, and thankfully he loves jumping, and he's an absolute um, um, little whippet across the cross country. So she's going to be doing the eventing on him. Um, so I'm probably not the best person to ask, but um, I I go with what I I as something that tugs in here. I ended up with Juris because I'm, I saw him on a friend's Facebook page. And I shared him and I went, oh, he's quite nice. Juice Ju is your big ginger horse, isn't it? Yeah, the big, yeah, the big ginger mama. <laughs> and um, he is like a tank. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I go with a, a feeling. Um, I do, as everybody knows, I do like knees. I like the knees to be up round their ears sometimes. They need to go out as well at some times. But, um, so but I, like I say, I, 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 horses find me. Oh, I love that. The horses yeah. find you. I love that. I hope that answers your yeah. question, Mira. Um, the, the little thing about... Um, no, I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's ask another question first of all. I'm going to find you... Uh, I've got something else I need to ask you, but um, I've got another question first of all from Sharon Linda. Oh, I know Sharon! It's from Sharon up in Scotland. Well, she was in Scotland. I don't know if she's living there now, but here we go. Right. Firstly, thank you to Tony, Mrs Equidance, and all the riders and trainers who've taken part in these Friday night open sessions. It's really very good of you all, especially having done it for no profit. So thanks again. 
Steph, I've followed your career for many years and I have the utmost admiration for the fact that you have combined a non-equestrian career with family and producing horses to Grand Prix and international level. What I'm wondering is, when you're competing against full-time professionals with massive wagons, great big support teams and strings of horses, how do you manage yourself, your nerves and the level of scrutiny that riders at this level inevitably get from so many sources these days? Thank you. Did you hear all that? Yeah, what, one thing I would say is I don't manage my... my um, my nerves. I absolutely feel sick and wondering every time just before I go down the centre, like, why am I doing this? And I've been doing this now internationally for 16 years. And every time I sit there and go, oh my God. And it's that, it's that moment when things go wrong in the test. <laughs> like, you know how they say, put it behind you, carry on. But it's really hard you know, we're all human. And for example, if you miss one of your changes or something and you think, right, I'm going to claw this back on a pirouette. And then if you muck that up as well, you think, oh my God, I'll, I've got to get the next pirouette. And, and it's learning to just go park it, concentrate on the movement within itself. And it is very hard. I can't, you know, I cannot, Simon and I, we, we do dressage or international dressage on a, on a shoestring. We can't afford to compete against the big boys. But what we've learned to do is go and do the best we can with what we have. Personal best is what it's all about, right? Evie, I've learned that from swimming with the kids. It's not <laughs> who else is swimming in the pool with you. Evie's <laughs> is out. I love that. I won't even go in the swimming pool until I've lost a whole load more weight. Oh, no, no, me either. I'll just float. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what, what I was going to ask you before that question is, you've got these wonderful names for your horses, and I think there's a bit of a funny story behind Mr. President, isn't there? Oh, oh, oh Mr. Shagger, extraordinaire. Excuse my French. So, so hang on, was, um, he bit, was he a bit riggy? Was he cut late or something? Well, we, we, we don't know. We never, we, we, again, Ian Smith was a law unto himself up where he came from up in, um, in uh, North Yorkshire. We have no idea. Um, but when we, Simon and I used to live over near South Leverton, um, we had him on livery there and they had what they called the cricket pitch. And he would, over in the cricket pitch, it would be um, a Keith and Joan Jones and bless them. And um, they used to have the geldings and the and the mares together in a massive cricket pitch it was so they were just in this big herd um and he was at mr p or rim rimmer um as he was called at the time because the reason we called him rimmer not because we, we didn't know it was a naughty word at the time we did it because of red dwarf of course because we were to, of course because when we used to when he used to go jumping he would sometimes go through the fence round the fence or over the fence but we never knew we just, so it was like a hologram. We just appeared the other side of the fence somehow. So, <laughs> <Eight John's laughs> <word>. <laughs> yeah. so that's how he got called Rimmer from Red Dwarf. Um, anyway, so then he started separating off in the field all the mares from the Geldings and make himself very well acquainted with all the mares. He did like his girls. And at the time, it was the scandal with um, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> uh, uh, and, yeah. and we went, he's as bad as Bill Clinton. I'm... Oh, oh, we seem to have lost you there. So I said, he needs to be called Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President it is then. Oh, that's a fantastic yeah. story. But it's true yeah. what Sharon was saying there about... Um, having to be up against some of the, you know, more privileged and uh, more well uh, financially assisted people with lots of big, big lorries and many horses and an entourage. It must be tough, though, Steph. So when you, when you turn yeah, up at an international... Yeah. But I, do, I guess because so many people like you. But yeah, but I don't know. I don't know why, or I don't know why, or how how people like me. But, I, but my kids always make a lot. It's a bit of a standing joke in our family is that I will go off to the stables and come back about three hours later, and they were just like, "How can it take you so long to take some A over?" I was chatting. 
I do like to chat. Um, and I think what it, I, I can't, like I say, I can't compete with the big boys. I don't have the, and I, I still remember the best advice Richard Davison gave me straight after Olympia, that first time when we had the standing ovation and all that. And he said, Steph, he says, don't go professional. And he said, and, and, and we was like, why? And he went, seriously, don't put your life on hold for dressage. And that was the best advice I think he's ever given me. He can tell me how to do all my riding, my, all my moves and shouts at me lots and, you know, kick the left vertebrae on, oh, no right here, blah, blah, blah. But the best advice he gave me was don't put your life on hold for dressage. And because I haven't put my life on hold for dressage, I have two beautiful children. I, you know, I've got a, a great husband who's very supportive. And if things go wrong, as they do in a dressage test or competition, I have to just look back at what I've got with my family. And, and it's a reality at the end of the day. And I know I'm going to have people turn around to me, all the purists, and go, I can't believe you said this. But at the end of the day, it's circus tricks on fancy horses. With my case, it's circus tricks on less fancy horses. <laughs> but not, it's not brain surgery. It's not, you know, it, you know, it's not astrophysics. It's not even geochemistry. At the end of the day, it's teaching an animal to do tricks, and it's and it, and you train them in the way that you would like a child, or you train them in a way um, that you would train a dog or any animal. There's the right way, and there's the wrong way, and there are boundaries. And, and that's how I, it's like with, with kids, people always say to me, everything's all, oh, you know, all this complicated mumbo jumbo that comes out when, when Pete trainers come out. I just like plain speaking, talk to the layman. I will say to me, God's sake, sit like a sack of potatoes and sit up. I'm like, why didn't you say that in the first place? You know, and, 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 and I feel that with, you know, with the horses and stuff, there's the right way, the wrong way, black and white. And, um, and like I said, with the kids, the kids will always give you an answer, whether it's the right answer you want. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I think that's absolutely fantastic, of course. Um, I think, uh, you know, I was at Catherston um, last week to just do some very socially distanced filming with Jenny. And there was one thing she said about the horses where it was about connection. And you can't ride them like a motorbike. They're not yeah. going to go faster or slower or up and down because you tell them to. You've got to work with them. And no matter yeah. what the horse, if you don't have that connection, it ain't happening. No, no. And, and there are days when you think, I'm getting so cross. But you have to be, you, ha and I have, you have to be the bigger person. You have to walk away from that situation and say, we will start again afresh tomorrow it's really hard especially a lot of dressage riders are almost obsessive compulsive that they want to do everything and want to do it to the best of their ability and that's really hard to let go and leave it park it and say we'll come back to that tomorrow and and i find it really hard but sometimes you have to and i that's where i'm lucky because simon will come down and go that's enough leave it move on and with that question, that's enough. Let's leave it and move on. Sharon Lindup, I hope that answered your question. It was a brilliant question. I'm going to find the next question, if I can find the file that I've got to find it from. And it's question 03, and it's actually from Mrs. Equidance. Ah. Hi, Steph. Uh, my question is about your training regime. Um, what do you do that ensures longevity of your horses when they're competing at the top level? Thank you. Good question. What do you do? Because, of course, uh, even Mr. P, he was doing Grand Prix for, what, six, seven years? Oh, ten. Ten. Oh, my God. So so what do you do in your training regime? Uh, I've read a little bit about your training regime, about how strict you are on schooling, hacking and days off. Explain to us, what is it that gives your horse that strength? I think, uh, I suppose we almost, we, we almost train them apart from the jumping side of it and well you know some of them do jump but we train them almost as if they're full all-round athletes and they um 
they like I say, they school a day, they hack a day, day off. I never school for longer than 30, 40 minutes. They're back in the stable or in the field, don't need to. I never focus and obsess, and that's what I'm saying about obsession. I don't obsess about one particular, I don't go into the school and say, today we are doing half pass, or today we are doing piaf and passage. I would do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I turn it around a bit. When we're out hacking, um, we go on all terrains, we will go on tarmac, we will go on roads and tracks, we will go on grass, we do, you know, we, uh, you know, undulating land, everything. And I, and that's right from the B3 slash four. And I think that is the key to keeping a leg on each corner, that they are, um, they are given that work right from day, you know, day one. And they're always turned out, mine are treated like horses, they're, they're turned out, you know, they have a life. And um, I, I, I do think, you know, that, I mean, uh, Mr. Hyde, he did five years at Grand Prix and still going strong with a lovely lady down in Worcestershire. I'm <laughs> with him. So, you know, it's, it is. And it, I think it's important to make sure you give them a good balance of terrain, exercise. We're lucky we live in the Derbyshire hills, so we don't have to worry. And we, Derbyshire, we don't have to worry about, you know, these um, water treadmills because we have puddles. We don't have to worry about, you know, um, you know, these, um, oh, what do you call them, treadmills, because we've got the hills. Yeah. So we use everything that we have locally around us, which is basically the Derbyshire hillside um, you, and, you, and the weather. You don't have a 60 by 20 at home, do you? I have a 37 by 20. If I can fit in a Grand Prix there, I can fit it in anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great answer, folks. That's an absolutely fabulous answer. Wonderful. I think that's awesome. Um, let's find the next question because we've got several to get through this evening, I'll tell you. Um, the next question is... Ah, you're going to like this. So, I'm just going to explain a little bit about this. We've got a friend up north called David Morris, and he asked a question last week, and it was so Geordie, I got back to him and said, could you do it a little slower so everyone can understand you? <laughs> so, um, he, he, he took this to heart a little bit, and he, and, and he, and he did this. Geordie question team. I think they're fitting for a dress hard man. Where are you? And they're uh, back to Tony. <laughs> All I got was Tony and why I? I got dressage. So, but he has, he has actually got, <laughs> thank you, David. We love you, my friends. We have actually got a, 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 a serious question from him as well. So here's Dave's serious question. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Hi, Steph. Um, right, so I have a friend who always says to me, a good horse makes a good rider. Now, from that, I just wonder what your opinions are, um, because I understand what he means, as in, like, if a racing driver was the best in the world, but had a Fiesta in the race, and they were all racing Ferraris, he ain't going to win the race. So, can you tell me what your opinion is on that? Thanks. Ooh. Good one. Good question. Good question, Dave. Mm, well, I, yeah, well, I would argue that actually, do you make your Ferrari? Don't know. I, maybe you sit there and you actually, you think about it, you've got a kit car. So do you build your Ferrari? Because you actually, what you start with is bits and they're all in a part, all apart. And your job then is the rider is to fit like Lego. You know all about Lego, Tony. Put the parts together in the right order with the right connections then you get your ferrari wow i really like that that's a really good answer because of course but let's be a little bit more contentious about this you can you can buy a good dressage horse with really good potential right but yeah. you may never get further than medium yeah you can buy I... a horse with good confirmation with potential and put the bits together and take them all the way. Is that what we're saying? Or you buy something that you've got absolutely no idea where you end up. I oh, love that. Fabulous. <laughs> so is that the message here is, is, is actually, don't give up, get the right training. Yeah, yeah. and it's, I, you know, yeah, you know, there's, I, 
I'm not lucky enough to sit there and go, well, I've tried the changes. It doesn't work. Bin that one, bring the next one along. You have to work with what you've got. And, you know, if there's things like, you know, their right hind isn't strong as their left hind leg, or their passage and PF is really good, but their extension isn't good. I'm not in that position, as many people are, of going, right, part that, I'll get another one. And that is what I have to, you have to work with what you have available to you. And maybe that's my skill set that I work and go, right, hmm, I need to work on X, Y, and Z. How can I make that better to enable me to move up to the next level? I always see it as a computer game. If I get this, this, and this in place, I can step up to the next level. Level up. <laughs> level up, you know, and keep moving up through the levels. And that's it. And that's what I used to do with Mr. P. I used to go, they used to go, oh, you know, I'll get 63, 64% at every level. I go, yeah, but I can do this. <laughs> and then they get to that level and they go, yeah, you're all right at that. But, you know, that's where you are. And I go, yeah, but I can do the next level. And, and that's how I got to Grand Prix. But it's personal, it's, it's personal best again, though, isn't it? It's always about yeah. oh. don't judge yourself against other people. It's no. just go and do the best you can with your combination. Yeah. And we PBs. 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 I mean, Mrs. Equivalence <laughs> has been discovering that with her fat Spaniard over the last year and gone from novice yeah. to medium over the last year. Oh, no, really? And he's never going to be a 70 plus horse, no. but he's, no. he's taught her a lot. Yeah, I know. But this is, my, uh, this is my argument. Whether, should equestrianism be really an Olympic sport? I know it, and it could be classed as controversial because my argument is you have a lot of people with the same amount of ability or natural talent all at a certain level. Yeah. What makes the difference is not that talent and that ability, is the horsepower they have. Now, if you are a swimmer, you have to be the fastest swimmer in that pool in order to win the gold medal. If you are a runner or a sprinter, you have to be the best person sprinting on that day. Now, arguably, do you have to be the best rider on that day of the Grand Prix to be the gold medal winner? It's all luck and it's about what horse you get. You can still be an excellent rider. It's all about the horse. So should it be an Olympic sport? But, or should any equestrianism be an Olympic sport? But you could say exactly the same thing about Formula One. This is what David was saying. Yeah, but that's not an Olympic sport. Oh, I know, but still, it's a, it's it's an international sport. You could say the same thing. You've been an excellent driver, and some of the young excellent Here's drivers. Kelly. Oh yeah, no, no, these guys can't see this, but Mrs. Equidance has just come in ah, with a gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. So you could be, I guess, that's it, isn't it? With a team sport, when you've got an element that is, you know, a high part of the point scoring, it's just life, yeah. isn't it? It is, and I'm not saying there's a right answer, there's a wrong answer, but when I'm lucky. I I, apart from Annabelle, it's a bit like sounds old, it's a bit like show jumping, for example. If you have a pole down show jumping, that's it. Pole down four faults. Yeah. In dressage, you can seem to miss if you get 15 ones and go, oh, you only did 11, but you did them beautifully, so you're still going to get an eight. Now you don't see them in show jumping go, oh, you knocked that fence down. It was four, but you did such a beautiful shape over that fence. We'll just come <laughs> back up again. Let's go back again, and we'll and then and we'll just give you a clear round. Yay, go for it! Oh, I love that attitude. Right, so we move on to the next question. David Morris, I hope that yeah. answers your question. I'll speak to you soon, my friends. Right, let's have a look at what we've got next. If I can find it, David Morris was five, so I'm looking for question six. Ah, it's from Helen Pierce, and here is question six. This is Helen. I, I live in sunny Essex. Apart from having one wonderful music from Tony from Equidance, what other tips can you give me to make the most of my prelim freestyle dressage to music? Thank you. Wonderful. And the horse had sunglasses on. 
Thank you, Helen. Laura said sunglasses. That is the best thing ever. Helen's asking, mm. apart from wonderful music, what can you do? Because we all know prelim, you know, you're an amazing freestyle floor plan designer. We know this. Uh, and we know this. It's a given. We seem to like the Stephs. We've got you and Steph Erdley, both amazing floor plan designers. Now, listen, how can you make a prelim more interesting? Because prelims are funny, aren't they? They've got those three trot circles and, you know, there's no degree of difficulty. So let's have a look. How can we make a prelim freestyle more interesting? I think it's about using the whole arena and making it interesting, like using quarter lines. Don't use normal lines that you would normally do. And mixing it things up, shapes like half 10 metre tear, you know, drop shapes, half 10 metre circles into movement. Don't just get stuck, bog stuck down with what are the compulsory moves in the test. As long as you've got them in there, you've got between four and five minutes to make it interesting. If you're bored of your test, I can guarantee the judge will be bored of the test. <laughs> so, um, and the other thing I find that they, the judges tend to like, they like it mirrored because they like to feel confident that they know roughly where the uh you're going in a test whether it's a prelim or whether it's a grand prix yeah it hit would be if you're gonna go wrong one way go wrong the other way smile it up and make it like it was meant i've done that many a time when i've missed a flying change i move it do it, but I do it wrong the other way as well and just smile. Oh, that is fantastic. And yeah, symmetry is really important, of course, with the music too, because we can mirror the music along with the floor plan. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget you've got to ride your music, not your floor plan. When it actually gets down to it, it's riding the music. Because at the end of the day, the interpretation mark is about hitting those musical cues, yeah. not, your, yeah. not, not your letters. Yeah. Right, yeah. and, and like I say, and I also think it's, I say, I think it's very, it is important that you also get on, obviously she does, gets on very well with your music producer, you know, obviously you've got Anna Ross, and you've got, um, and you've got Beth, and I, for poor, but poor old Julie, because she lives down the road, she has me, knocking on her door, going, can we just have a go? go? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you know, and, and you know, you've got Dan, who's got Ross, Dan Watson, and that, and Craig Messenger. They've got Ross. So, it, but it's so important to have a really good relationship with your music producer. I think you've got Liz De Gertis as well. But it, and but then because we as riders are really annoying to the producers. No, you're we not. Are, we are. We're just sitting there going, "Can you just move back? Can you just change this? I can't hear this bit. I want that bit there." And I swear to God, I drive Julie insane. When I come up and go, oh, what about Rocky Horror Picture Show? And she's like, you are joking me. Uh, I know it could really work. A little bit with, you know, Town Called Malice, because that Actually, sums up. It really does work. I'm really glad <laughs> we don't have Steph on our books. Julie Geraghty, you're, you're welcome to this lady. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, I mean, like Julie at the time, I was just like, oh, wouldn't it be funny to have sweet transvestite? She went, seriously? We've done mm -hmm. it. It oh, works. I'll tell you now. Transvestite. It works. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't <laughs> listen to her. It works. We've done, we, we, did, done, we, did entire we did an horror. entire Rocky Horror Picture Show at an elementary. Yeah, she nailed it. She, and she nailed she, it. She and she got, she got oh, nine, oh, nine, oh, nine oh, for the sure. music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It what did our sweet transvestite in it as well? You're absolutely right. Should we move swiftly on? Yes. Right, our next question is from let's have a look. We've got uh question seven. Oh, it's from Sherry Reeves. A question from Sherry Reeves. Steph, hi Tony, thank you for taking my question tonight. This is Gemini, my homebred mare. Now my question to you, Steph, tonight is now, we are not very good at dressage. We only do unaffiliated. But to have a bit of fun in the school and to be able to have something to achieve, I do like to compete at local shows and I do like something to go for in the school, to school to. So my question is, that we are at elementary level due to her pace is her canter is very good her counter counter is very good very balanced her upwards transitions walk to canter 
her downwards transitions canter to walk, leg yielding. So all the levels, the elementary, all the movements that elementary look for, we are capable of doing. So my question to you is to help get my marks up. Is there any particular dressage movements that are difficult to put together that the judge would like to see that maybe mark my dressage up that way and get a few more? So there we go. Elementary, are there any movements, elementary freestyle, any movements? Because of course, we don't, it's not marked for difficulty until medium. So elementary, no. is there anything that she could put, that Sherry could put together that would make the judge go, oh, that's interesting. So that's the inventiveness mark, isn't it? It's almost like, you, I think, if, you, if you're good at your counter, getting some challenging counter counter in there. For example, you could put in, for example, doing a two-loop counter counter serpentine, yeah, and then doing your simple change to the counter counter. Oh, that's beautiful. I love watching that. In back, yeah, but that, and that's, uh, I think, is that in the pony test for medium, or is it the, the, is it the European pony test? It is, I, the FER, yes. Yeah, I've seen a pony. The other one that I thought looked quite nice as well is, um, I saw another pony, ponies are quite nippy at doing this, is doing, they did counter counter around the short side, out onto the short diagonal, simple walked, half pirouette in walk, back out to counter counter again. Boom. That'll give you socks. Boom. <laughs> yeah, but then are we getting marked for difficulty? I mean, at the end of the day, another mark with freestyle is about keeping the flow. So, but yeah, I mean, medium, medium and above go mental, but for elementary. What else can we look at? Obviously, you can have shoulder in at elementary now from 2019. Yeah. Shoulder in down your quarter line, shoulder in down your centre lines, changing from your shoulder in left to your shoulder in right. Yeah. Without, you, know, you can cheat at the lower levels and put in your little circles to set yourself up. Yes. So you could shoulder in down to X, 10 metre circle left, followed by 10 metre circle right into shoulder in right. But what you have to be careful of, you've got to make sure you allow enough time in to do the compulsory moves, but in an interesting way. You yeah. want to make it fun and interesting as well. So I think the previous question was about prelim, and that's actually quite a hard... I mean, I know from you and from Steph Erdley yeah. that yeah. designing a prelim is actually really hard. Because... It's hard, yeah. But what, what I tend to try and do now is I try and combine the two tests, the prelim and the novice together, yeah. put the compulsory moves, in essence, the shapes in for both tests. But obviously you have the different size circles for the, um, the prelim. You have the 20 metre trot and the 20 metre counter circles. You have the 15 metre trot circles in, yes. the, in, the, in, the, novice, in yeah. the novice and the 20 metre circles in, in that. But you've got the stretch frigging circle in the prelim. Why? What, what exactly? Who needs that? You don't do it at Grand Prix. But no. anyway. And I find that I, I like to put that in towards the end of the test because by the time you get to the end of the test, the horse is a bit t more tired, the rider's a bit more relaxed. Stretch out, yeah. Do all the canter and the trot work and the walk work. Finish with a nice stretch circle before you then come down to centre line. And I, and then, and like I say, but then what they find is if they've got two for the price of one, because it, they might have to tweak the music, or you might have to tweak the music a little bit because of slightly different size of circles. But there's not that much difference between the two. No. And there aren't that many prelim tests competitions out there, so you're better almost doing an easy novice than you are doing the prelim in the first place. Do you know what? Interesting point. I got caught up in a beautiful discussion on one of the British dressage groups this week, and it was about um, walk to canter. And someone had asked. I saw that, and I didn't comment. I watched your Achilles. <laughs> Your belly's gone. I went, OK, I'm going to see where we're going. Well, I love this because I love learning about I mean, obviously, I'm fairly new to dressage. I've only been involved with dressage for five and a half, six years. But I was, I was reading the, the guidelines and I've read all the judging because, of course, this is my Bible. You know, you need to know about this yeah. stuff. And I've got all the test sheets. And so someone had said about prelim committee walk to counter. And I couldn't see a reason why not. But I joined the dressage conversation, the, the, the discussion, and it transpires that actually the simplest thing to do, folks, is 
just whatever you're riding at freestyle that level just consider it as if it's allowed at that level in straight dressage it's good at this level and there's yeah. certain things that are allowed and certain things that aren't allowed they can't list them all on the test sheet so just go with that simple rule of thumb if it's allowed at straight prelim it's allowed at freestyle prelim <laughs> is that about right yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's and, and like you say, and I was watching it because it is a bit sketchy. The 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 information, isn't it? Even the judges were having a discussion about it. Yeah, and it's really interesting to sit there and go. You do need to have a couple of strides to trot before you go up into canter. Yeah, which is a good thing, really, because do you know what? If you can do, if you can do walk to canter, do novice. Elementary. 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 Yeah. yeah, but you may have no lateral work. So. No. <laughs> Hey, let's move on to the next question. Lots to stick on that one. The next question is from, let's see if I can find it. It's from Gemma Catling, and here it goes. So, hi, Dance and Steph. This is a question for both of you, really. Um, how do you create a floor plan? Is it better to start with the music and then the floor plan, or do you create the floor plan and then fit the music to it? And how do you show your horse's strengths off? How do you decide which movement to do at which part? And is the timing important as well? Do you have to stick to a certain timing for the music um, so that you don't get penalty points? Um, yeah, I hope everyone's well. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Gemma. What an amazing three-part question there. I'm just going to answer the last part of that question first because this is uh, something that a lot of people ask us about timing. With freestyle, it's different to straight dressage. So in prelim and novice, you've got between four and five minutes and that's from after you start your, your test, that's after the first halt, till your final halt. You've got 20 seconds discretionary on the way in. If you're coming in and walk, I wouldn't walk all the way down to I. <laughs> just because they'll get a bit annoyed with the amount of time you're taking so 20 seconds on the way in and four to five minutes every other freestyle test is four and a half to five minutes apart from grand prix because of all the faffing that goes on isn't that right yeah and then now you have to remember which i've only learned this week was the um the inter 8b which has caused a lot of confusion is now only five to five and a half minutes so if people are looking to just shorten their grand prix 30 seconds cutting out your grand prix what, 30 <laughs> seconds to a minute yeah it's like yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's a heck of a lot to lose i mean yeah you sit there and just go oh i do sim a single pirouette instead of a double pirouette but like me, if you do lots of faffing about and you pee off and passage at the end, you've got to cut it all out. Get straight to the point and halt. <laughs> I love that. Right. What was that earlier part of the question was dressage to music or music to dressage? I, I, I When you get to Grand Prix or into one and above, if there's a bit of music that you really like, I, I will listen to it in the car and think, oh, I can do a twiddly bit there, I'll shimmy this. And it's you, your job as the producers to try and get the twiddly bits roughly in the right place. No, exactly, so exactly <laughs> in the right place then. Exactly the right place. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So that's it. But the general rule is you do your floor plan first, then you video it, then you time it. Make sure when you've got all those in place, then you annoy the, mu uh, the music producer. Absolutely. And do you know, we've got another thing to add to this. So you do, the, you do your floor plan. You, you've got your floor plan perfect. You film your floor plan. Uh, you either do the music yourself or you send it to a producer like us or like Judy Geraghty or like or Tom Hunt. And then you say, OK, that's what I'm going to arrange the music to. But actually, you arrange the music. When you go back out, whenever you ride it, it rides differently. So you, oh, God, you can't God. just judge it by the arena you train in because the surfaces are different. Some will ride faster, some will ride slower. Some days your horse is in a better mood, it's more forward. Some days it's just lazy and doesn't want to hold back. So your job is actually, yes, we can put the music to the dressage, but then the important thing, the most important thing, is you ride the dressage to the music because at the end of the day, your points will be for how you've hit that music not how your key, producer has made it. Yeah, the key thing is learning where you can change your floor plan if you're either ahead of yes. or behind your music. And it's all about either using your corners, cutting your corners, 
making your circles or half circles slightly bigger, slightly smaller. As long as you have all the compulsory moves in there, you can adjust every, everything else to fit the music and, and to make you feel happy and comfortable setting up for the compulsory moves. Perfect. So don't think you've got to go and ride the exact floor plan that you've designed to the letter like you would a straight dressage test. The point is, it's malleable. Hitting your compulsory moves making sure the judges are happy that you've done everything beautiful because at the end of the day you're getting marked on the dressage first and foremost but then yeah. the, the artistics yeah. will come up and the artistics are a lot of points coefficient yes. of four isn't it for elementary no for musical yeah, yeah. interpretation and it's not just music it's music and interpretation so that's a really important point yes very very important great question there i think we've got another question coming up here let me find it for you. It is from Gemma Catling, and here we go. So, hi, Eggdance and Seth. Oh, we've seen her. It's not, we that one. <laughs> it's not from Gemma, it's from Mel James. Here we go. Hi, what upcoming combination are you looking forward to seeing in the future? Ooh, what upcoming combination are you looking forward to watching in the future? Well, I have to say, I, I do love Jura Fuller and Nicky Barker. I absolutely love that stallion. And I've even to the point, I'm trying to persuade a Mr. Croxford, say, can we have a durable baby? Because he's so lovely, he's so cute. <laughs> so you reckon it's, it's Nicky Barker, Nicky Crisp, Nicky Barker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't, she's pregnant, isn't she, at the moment? I know, and I, that's wonderful, because she's doing the right thing. She gets, she's not putting her life on hold for dressage. And, and I do, and I, you know, and you know, she, she had Pessoa. I don't know if you remember the years of Pessoa. Uh, was it Pessoa? Yeah, the, the mare she yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did incredibly well with that. And she's been really patient with this horse and doing, you know, lovely. Um, Liz has obviously got, she's quite excited about her seven year old coming up as well. Don't we know about and, that? <laughs> oh, I know. And uh, Anna Ross has got, and Beth have so many, it's ridiculous. And Dan and, and, and Craig Messenger have so many. You know, I just have Juris, the orange tank, you know? Juris anyway. is a beautiful orange tank, though, isn't he? I mean, he's. he's... Well, mm, what, are your what are your plans with. How old is Juris now? Uh, rising seven. And where have you got him to so far? I mean, apart from Simon well, Rowan. <laughs> well, well, um, well, the thing is, I've been reading, I'll say that FBI blooming seven-year-old test is scary as hell. I mean, to see, it's no good just having a blooming flying change. It may as well be a shortened version of PSG. You've got three time changes, four time changes, um, half pirouettes, large half pirouettes in canter. So it's a case of... We'll just see where we end up. He can pee off and passage because of his natural movement. He can do flick flacks. He's one time flick flacks. He can do fours, threes and twos. As somebody said when I was talking about that the other day, when you do fours, threes and twos across the diagonal, it's called a phone number. <laughs> You've got no idea. <laughs> I love that. You said about Anna Ross, she's got lots and lots of horses down there. Of course, what's really exciting is they've got their embryo transfer programme with young mm -hmm. horses coming through now, which are looking really promising for the future. So for me, wow, those are some yeah. combinations yeah, to watch. But uh, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Anyway, let's go to the next question. Fabulous. We've got the next question from... Oh, we've done Mel James. Oh, actually... Uh, <laughs> Here's something you didn't know about. This is your kids. Mum, we have a question for you. Are we the best son and daughter in the whole entire world? <laughs> That's your children who sent me a question. Are they the best children in the world, Steph? Well, it depends what mood I'm in when I'm answering it. <laughs> I'm so sorry they hijacked the show. <laughs> <laughs> Love them both. We don't have our kids here tonight. Luckily, uh, Matilda is now in bed and Charlie is not playing Fortnite because he can't take up our broadband. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be in a strop then, <laughs> like mine. Before we do any more, actually, um, there was a, you know, you sent me a whole load of video, didn't you? And obviously I couldn't edit the outtakes. You asked me to edit the outtakes. So you did an outtakes edit for us. Do you mind if I just, mind if I put, I'm going to play yeah, it anyway. I'm going to play it. It's yours, obviously. I'm going to play it anyway. <laughs> no, honestly, some of the things on this video are fantastic. Ladies and gents, this is Steph Crox's Ant Tanks. Here we go. 
Here we go. Welcome to, again, welcome to my world. Yeah, not sure if you can see. This is my muck heap. And at this time in the morning, you just have to pray when you fought the muck up to the top of the muck heap that you don't get a face full in the pouring rain and the wind as we've got at the moment. So wish me luck. I'm going in. I might not survive, but you'll know where I am if I don't come back. Morning, Hi, Polo. How are you this morning? Can I come in? Right, muck out, wood coming in to light the fire as the kids constantly moan that we live in a cold house. My argument for that is put on another jumper or do some activity. But anyway, we will hopefully endeavour to get the fire going at some point. Thunder helping you. You're supposed to be carrying on with your work, Ben. Mm. Come on. Can't so, me. how many more? More. You have you got to draw the children now, having a snowball fight? Can I do a stick now? Yes. But you've got to make it obvious they're snowballs. Thanks, Thunder. Thanks. Thanks. Daft animal. Please note our running attire. I have to say, trainers are so overrated in these weather conditions. We well, are just going wellies all the way. Are you stuck, Ben? Yeah. How are you going to get out? I don't know. This is why we don't wear trainers, even though Daddy disapproves when we go running, because we have people doing that. Don't move. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So has he managed to hack in? He hasn't hacked in, Mum. So how's he putting all the answers on then? Because he's, he's editing the document. Giving you all the answers. Yeah. What the whole class the answers? Yeah. He's giving Are they the right answers? <laughs> Probably not, but <laughs> I'll take them. Let's go and see if Annabelle's working. Or not. Are you on your phone? Yeah. Off to feed the horses. Is this your pride and joy, my dear? No. Your yeah. Pride and joy. yeah, 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 whatever. God. I closed the window, but it's not made much difference. It's like, it's like sending smoke signals. Oh, here's Ben. Da -da 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 -da. Come on, Ben. You got your goggles on. That's it. That made all the difference. Look at that windscreen wiper. It's amazing. Mine is amazing. I don't think mine even works. Your foot yours works. <laughs> I'm just en route to try and find out what my crazy kids are doing in the dark, in the snow. They sit appeared outside about 10 minutes ago, it's still snowing here, and I can't seem to find them. I've seen two shining lights down the field, and I'm assuming that might actually be their head torches. I've got the dogs, can you see them? Follow, following with me, and Oh, I can now see sledge, sledge prints. So I only consume that the, my till, two children, and now I can hear a scream. I don't know if that's normal. Oh, well, anything's normal in the Croxford household. Anyway, Ben, Annabelle. As you can see, I don't even see. There they are, can we see two lights? And just at least they're alive. That's always, always useful to know. Is it any good? Ah! Ooh, is it any good? Can you see what you're doing? Oh my God, it sounds like Alton Towers. In the dark in the snow, in the middle of the Derbyshire hills. Oh no, gone down even further. Crazy children. Well, I'm assuming they're mine. So here they are, the wanderers are returning. Back up the slope. So, 
Have you got? You have not. Have you got Grant? You haven't got Granny's sledge with you. You've just got the plastic ones. Whoa, Annabelle. <laughs> This is called extreme sledging. <laughs> this is when the two children have been cooped up all day doing homeschooling. <laughs> Head towards Annabelle's light. Extreme sledging in Derbyshire. What's that all about? <laughs> it's all happening. We didn't get any snow, Steph. It's not fair. We didn't get any snow. And we, you know, it's lockdown. If you're going to go out and do exercise, sledging, surely. Absolutely. And, and, and we're like, say, I have to say, we've had more snow this year than I think we've had for probably about four, four, five years. So it's actually come at a good time for the kids because it keeps them entertained. It does. It's quite hard, isn't it? Doing the whole thing at home. I mean, we've got the two kids at home at school, obviously, nine and three year old. You've got slightly ben's older. 10. Oh, yeah. yeah, Ben's 10, Annabelle's 13. Yeah. Ben, come here. Hello. He's trying to be quiet. Quick. Yeah. Come and show the Minecraft onesies. Oh, yeah. Ben, absolutely. Go on, go. then. Off he goes. Trying to be quiet. But it's quite tough, isn't it? Having the family at home, trying to work, trying to do the horses and everything. We're in exactly the same boat as you, really. It's, it's, it's a tough Hard time. Work. So, folks, we've had Steph Cloxford here tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. Steph, have you got any final things you want to say before I say this up? Stay safe, enjoy life, and enjoy your horses. We're going to keep it on screen, but first of all, I'm going to just play um, a little thing about what's going to happen next week. Because, of course, next week, we're... We're at Catherston Stud with Jenny Lauston Clark and also with Charlotte Dicker, who's her granddaughter. But with Jenny Lauston Clark next week, so please come and join us next week because I'm sure you're going to love it. We've got a huge amount of interest for it already. I've just got to find the video I'm going to play you. Uh, output videos, here it is. And here it is. No, that's not the right. <laughs> it's so hard hang on here we go I've got it I've got it I've got it on the side here I already pre-programmed it so this is Catherine Stubb for next week we'll say goodbye to Steph in a minute but first of all watch this Hi, I'm Jenny and welcome to Catherston Stud uh, in quite a nice sunny day among the rain. Yes, we've got the indoor, we've got an outdoor surface as well. We've got 100 acres here um, and, uh, of, you know, just in this area, which is, which is really nice. And, um, you know, when fields are empty, we ride some out in fields. There's a, a big 20 acre field we sometimes canter around, um, which, is, which is nice. Trot and canter, it's, it's undulating land. So, so that's quite good to make them trot up the hills and that sort of thing. So this is where you teach from. That's a big boy, yes. 
Well, that's... When the weather's like this, definitely. <laughs> Sometimes you go out uh, outside in the outdoor school. Um, but, uh, yes, this is a godsend in this weather. And snow and ice. Horses tell you what they like and don't like, and and you know I find that fascinating. You've only got to look them in, look them in the eye, and they they tell you things. Do, do you know? I, I get to know that more and more every year. Yes. As I get to know them more. And so many people <laughs> sort of rather take them as a sort of machine. You know, they're not a motorbike. Do you know that goes faster, slower, or bounces up and down? That they're, they're a feeling animal, aren't they? And and. And, you know, I think the, the working in partnership is what is, what, well, to me, that's what dressage should be all about. There we are, yes. So that's what I like. I love my carrots. Ah, we're back on screen. <laughs> <laughs> we were just having a massive discussion then, folks. Oh, we're chatting. We're chatting away. And I was like, Steph, shut up. Shut up. The video's about to end. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much, Steph. We're going to catch up with you. Obviously, with me and Mrs. Eckford answer them and have a chat. But before we do, can we just say thank you to all of you for watching. It's absolutely fabulous this evening. Uh, join us next week, Catherine Stud. Have a look at what we've got coming up because actually we've got some amazing things coming up on the menu. Uh, and also, please, please, please support our charity because that's mega important for us. Uh, if I go back to my default screen, I, mean, I might be able to put up the um, text to give. It's Horse World. Text Horse World to 70085 to donate three pounds. These guys are amazing. They really, really, really need your help right now. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting them. We've had a wonderful evening tonight. I tell you, absolutely brilliant, haven't we, Steph? Absolutely brilliant. Lovely. Thank you ever so much for inviting me. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's always going to be the same. Catch up with you all soon. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>